and return uh, to the Lord. But there's another reason why some people may face a type of paralysis, that is a fear or hesitation of doing the will of God. Maybe we have many opportunities before us that God wants us to take part in. As the scripture tells us, the one who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Maybe not to everyone else who may not know, may not have the opportunity to do that. And this, I think we have more often, we have this type of hesitation when we are called to a certain type of service, whether it be inside the church or more often outside the church. Some people are very reluctant to do a service, or maybe we may pretend to do a service, uh, but really we are limited or we don't want to fully invest in what God wants us to do. The other day as I was driving, I saw a lady who was in a wheelchair that was left alone and was in deep pain, not just physical, but also emotional pain. And as I finished my calls and I tried uh, thought about it, I realized there was nobody around her to serve. So as I returned to try to see what I could do, I didn't see her there. My hesitation led to a lost golden opportunity. And many times we see people who are suffering and struggling alone without anyone to help like this man, and we hesitate and don't take the opportunity that God has allowed us to serve in. Other people are paralyzed out of laziness. And you may know after coming out of the pandemic where people were very reluctant to leave their homes, maybe to come to church, to come to Sunday school or to go to school, and we wanted to relax in our pajamas and remember the days where we, our movements were limited. There are, of course, a lot of other people who wanted to jump and go and move as quickly as possible. If there was one thing that we learned from that experience is how to use our time wisely and how to take the proper opportunities to balance we are not on one extreme of the busyness of the world has captured and taken and choked us with the cares of the world, and on the other, where we are just sitting and really not doing too much uh, that God is, has asked us to. We find a lot of people who are reluctant to do different types of services. And I've talked to many priests who are saying, we used to have many servants, but after COVID, we found there's a shortage. There's always a shortage of servants in the vineyard of the Lord. And that's why we're always praying, Lord, send out the servants. But I think especially now, in this time, the Lord is searching for faithful servants, not people who desire titles or to have services that are in the public eye, but the tr true service that God is seeking. And these, uh, as you will ask uh, any of the servants, we are always hungry for that type of service, not because we want to let go of our service, but we see the potential that God has entrusted us which, with, and we desire that to be fulfilled and to complete it in the utmost and most perfect way. There are other people who are paralyzed out of despair. <clears throat> we are told that the angel came down at a certain time. Uh, in one of the other translations, or correct, a certain season. In this season that uh, we are told, we have a glimpse of in the gospel, <clears throat> is probably around the same season that we are dealing with now. The time before the Passover, before the Hul Vasfa, and before the great sacrifice. Now, some people who uh, wait, have to wait for a while to be fulfilled. If they've taken a certain test and have not passed it, sometimes for graduate school, sometimes later, in their career for board exams, and they may take it one, two, or three times and get discouraged. This man had several times for many years taken the exam or was not able to fulfill because he had no one to help him. And sometimes in our despair, we give up trying because we said we did what we could and it didn't reach the result that we intended. One time I knew of a person who took the bar exam for 17 times and he still persevered and eventually I said to myself, I said after two or three times, I probably wouldn't have the same determination. This man 
had a very strong determination and was still looking and gazing at this pool, praying to God for help. So <clears throat> these sometimes when we are paralyzed out of despair, you'll hear certain phrases by people saying it doesn't matter, whatever the case, who cares, or so what. These type of phrases are with someone who's paralyzed out of despair to the point where they don't want to take any challenges, any tasks before them. This man teaches us how not to give up hope and how always to seek for God who finds a better solution for him than the pool. <clears throat> the rest of the people, when they went in, they were healed. This man had a more special healing, and the Lord healed him from within and from outside. There are other people who are paralyzed of hate, a lack of forgiveness of others that leads to bitterness, resentment, and paralysis. <clears throat> the gospel yesterday was speaking about this type of hypocrisy. The lack of forgiveness for others can lead to our lack of our own forgiveness, as the Lord tells us in our Father's prayer. Forgive other people as you desire or you wish to be forgiven. This is the theme of the last three Sundays of the of the great fast, how the repentance and forgiveness of the prodigal, the Samaritan woman, and the paralytic. You remember in the prodigal son, the older son was not willing to forgive and to accept his brother. The younger one, he knows his sin, he knows his mistake, uh, and is able to accept anyone and anything. It's similar to a story that was told in the Middle Ages of two other brothers. They were uh, monks who were living. One of them was doing everything right. The, the older one, he fasted, he prayed, he read the Bible, he gave alms, and he was obedient and faithful as much as he could. The younger one, who was disobedient in everything, and even to the point he wanted to kill his brother. That's how much, how angry he was with the older. But this uh, uh, younger uh, brother, um, after a while, he was told that the old the king asked for the older brother to offer incense to the idols. And this older brother refused, and so he was going to be martyred. He was going to be killed. So when the younger brother found out, he ran to him, and he said, I heard that you're going to be martyred. Please forgive me for what I did. I know this is the only chance that I will get. And the other brother said, no, not the time. He was very resistant. So the, the, came, the, the executioner came to, to, to execute the man, and the, the brother came again to him, and he said, please forgive me. He kissed his feet. He said, God uh, will not forgive you if you don't forgive me. And he tried again with him, and still he was very reluctant. <clears throat> In the, after a while, the, the man was a little bit... Um, upset at this execution. He said, why do you want to execute me again? He said, because you won't incense offer, offer incense to the idols. He said, okay, let me offer incense to the idols. I will deny my Christ. And the younger the son, the brother was very surprised at this. He saw an angel that was awaiting with the crown, the crown of martyrdom for the martyrs. And he ran to his brother. He said, please forgive me. And he went to the execution and he said, I am a Christian and I'm willing to die for my Lord. The story was one not of how bitterness, hate, anger, lack of forgiveness can lead someone to truly deny his Lord. But the younger one who had acknowledged all of the sins that uh, he had committed, but was very quick to repent, very quick to ask for forgiveness. I think in this world, this is the great paralysis that we find. We have many excuses, many reasons why people didn't treat us the way they should. People said things, did things behind our back, and we have maybe many reasons to be angry. But the Lord says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. That vengeance is mine, says the Lord. The Lord is the one who sees and to knows, and he asks us not to wreak vengeance, not to be wrathful, but actually to give up our wrath, to give up our anger, and to come to our brother and say, I've sinned, forgive me. Very difficult sentence for many of us to say. 
Because if we don't, we turn into like the scribes and the Pharisees who are very hypocritical. They saw the miracle that, that this man raised his bed, was carrying his bed on the Sabbath after many, many years. And all they could think of, who told you to carry your bed? It was not allowed for you to go a certain distance and to carry things. Even if a mother wanted to carry something from one room to the next on the Sabbath and she was not able, she has a little baby she is allowed to carry, she would put whatever object on the baby and carry it into the next room. This is the type of uh, what the Lord was condemning. The useful things, the good things, they were allowed to do on the Sabbath. But because they wanted to be faithful, they began to worship the law, worship the letter, and forgot about the Lord. They were far from what God wanted. I think in these days, <clears throat> we want to hear a lot of justification for the way that we feel or that we act. But God wants us to learn this lesson of forgiveness, to come to him and to accept others. Bethesda is called the house of mercy. And I don't think it's coincidence why the Lord went to this man outside of the house of mercy to teach us how to be merciful to one another. Mercy means <clears throat> that we don't get what we deserve. Grace means that we get what we don't deserve. God gives us many blessings, but none of us deserve it. But in this place, in this day, it's a good opportunity for us to reflect and to see how much God has been merciful to us. And as we say in the Gregorian liturgy, he crowns us with mercies to teach us how that we can be merciful. This world, especially after the pandemic, is hungry for mercy. We don't find it in many of the leaders. We don't find it in many of the families. We don't find it in many of the places of work because all the pressure, all the stress, all the uncertainty in this world, it's the merciful people whom God will use to work his work. May the Lord bestow upon us every grace and every blessing. Glory be to Allah and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much.